the diencephalon is divided into four parts the subthalamus epithalamus dorsal thalamus which is also called as thalamus and hypothalamus all these structures are derived from diencephalon so here the epithalamus include the pineal gland which in humans has an important role in circadian rhythm as well as in reproductive cycles and the habenula which has the connections between the basal nuclei limbic system and the brain stem reticular formation whereas the subthalamus is a region that is essentially a continuation of the midbrain tegmentum the main component of the subthalamic nucleus is the tegmentum which functions as a part of the basal nuclei and when we talk about the thalamus the thalamus is the largest subdivision of the diencephalon compared to all these four structures whose primary function is mainly to relay and integrate information so if you see the thalamus here whatever may be the sensory inputs which are received by the thalamic nuclei so these thalamic nuclei not only receives the information integration and processing of the information is also done at the thalamic area that is the reason thalamus is called as relay center of the brain or relay center of the central nervous system so remember that the only sensory pathway which is not mediated through the thalamus is the smell other than the sensation of smell all other sensory information should be relayed should be processed and should be integrated in the thalamus before it reaches other higher centers of the brain so because of this reason the location of the thalamus is also an ideal anatomical location here because it is present in the deeper part of the brain at the core of the diencephalon so core of the diencephalon and deep to the cerebral cortices so where it conveniently acts as a head office for all the integration as well as relay center of the sensory information as well as motor information from all over the body but majority of the sensory information relays into the thalamus and motor information also should be relayed into the thalamus before processing further which means finally we can say that the thalamus acts as a relay and integration center for all the motor as well as sensory impulses between the higher centers of the brain as well as to the periphery this is what you need to know about what exactly the thalamus does in the body now let us talk about the relations of the thalamus as we already mentioned that the thalamus lies at the core of the diencephalon that is deeper part of the cortices as a result it is surrounded by a very important structures for example if you see if you see the anterior aspect of the thalamus which means the anterior pole we can see because we have a pole here the anterior pole forms the posterior wall of the interventricular foramen of monroe and this interventricular foramen of monroe permits the communication between the lateral as well as third ventricles for the flow of csf additionally other than this interventricular foramen of monroe there are five veins that collapse to form internal cerebral vein at the anterior end of the thalamus we can clearly see the internal cerebral vein at the anterior end of the thalamus over here so these vessels can be remembered by the mnemonic called as stacks the superior striate thalamostriate anterior terminal choroidal and septal veins all these are the structures which are related to the thalamus 
next let us talk about the medial relations the medial wall of each thalamus forms the lateral wall of the third ventricle and next is the dorsal relations the dorsal surface of the thalamus is in close proximity to the striae terminalis other than this the choroid plexus of the third ventricle and the body of the fornix all these structures are related dorsally to the thalamus and the internal cerebral vein courses along the dorso medial length of the thalamus while the superior thalamostriate vein runs along the dorso lateral surface of the thalamus so when we see the dorsal aspect of the thalamus and this dorsal aspect is covered by a thin layer known as stratum zonale while laterally it is covered by an external medullary lamina and this external medullary lamina is like a strip like structure which actually separates the lateral and the ventral thalamus from the thalamic reticular nucleus and the subthalamus and superficial to the stratum zonale of the thalamus is the caudate nucleus so we can see the head of the caudate nucleus here the head of the caudate nucleus lies antero superiorly to the thalamus with the body which is traveling superior and laterally to the body of the thalamus and lateral to the external medullary lamina there is a reticular nucleus then the posterior limb of the internal capsule so here there are like numerous neuronal tracts which travel through the different limbs of the internal capsule to synapse with the thalamus further the internal capsule also separates the thalamus from the globus pallidus and putamen together known as lentiform nucleus and next is the posterior relation the posterior most aspect of the thalamus is known as pulvinar or we can say pulvinar structures each pulvinar is lateral to the pineal gland the habenular and posterior commissures and posterolateral to the corpora quadrigemini which are nothing but superior as well as inferior colliculi and superior to the medial as well as lateral geniculate bodies additionally the posterior thalamus is deep to the splenium of the corpus callosum after discussing the posterior relations let us talk about the inferior relations of the thalamus there are two important major structures which are lying inferior to the thalamus antero inferiorly is the hypothalamus and directly inferior to the thalamus is the cerebral peduncle and the cerebral aqueduct of sylvius all these are the relations of the thalamus